Hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you. Let's read the Bible. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 from verse 26. Acts chapter 8, starting from verse 26, I'll read. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man who should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speakest the prophet this, and of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And they went their way, and they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and, and said, Thou, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariots to stand still. And they went down both unto the water, and both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And okay, after verse 39. So before I preach, the choir sings. The choir. I feel like they sing longer and they're taking my time. And I says, how many songs do you have left? And so, and I can't tell them to stop. So it may sound like a joke. And so I have to calculate the time that I have. And so, and that's what has happened. And preaching the word. And I have to preach in the end. If I preach in the beginning, then the choir will say that I'm taking too much of their time. So anyway, the choir is so wonderful and I'm so happy to share the word of God with you and there's not a single person here who stood up to leave during the sermon time and so I'm so thankful and so I feel rest assured and I'll share the word with you do you also feel the same the Bible when you read the Bible what is it talking about and what can we get from the Bible God has so many things to tell us. In all ways, in all aspects, He is sharing the words with us. And when He shares His words with us, sometimes, sometimes God doesn't finish what He wants to say and He continues on. And you can tell that God has some, so many things to say to us. And as I read the Bible over and over again, at first, I just read the story and understood the story but I then began to see the heart of God and the more deeper thing that I discovered we are all people who have sinned before God we who have sinned God wanted us to be free from sin and God wants us to be set free from sin. And when you read the Bible, that is the most absolute thing that pops up out of the Bible. Uh, so, uh, whatever sins that we have, not having the point of interest in what sins we have committed, but looking towards Jesus who has washed away our sins and so that we can thankfully and thankfully and with gratitude serve the Lord. And so in, I think that I, I preach this well. Pastors 
in different churches in Korea, they preach that you are a sinner, and that is wrong. And many times, many people, they feel they are at a crossroad. And so maybe I don't have much to say. That, much to say. That's why I started with this introduction. But if you see here in Acts chapter 8, we have read Acts chapter 8 today. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And so the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, Go down the south and go towards the way where it's going to Jerusalem unto Gaza. And so Philip he went to that place. And as he was going, who did he meet? And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all the treasures, had come to Jerusalem for her to worship, and was returning and sitting in chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. And so... When the chariot was ro going and as they were traveling, he saw how the eunuch was reading the scriptures of Isaiah. And Philip ran unto the other unto him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and says, Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand what you're reading? That's basically what he's saying. And, and he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And so it's very interesting how this unfolds. And so the good thing about our church is, and so if, as long as you come to church, the pastor, he shares this very simply, right? And so there's no part where it becomes complicated to understand, right? That means that the pastor is preaching well, right? And so I feel like I'm being acknowledged for the first time by you guys. Thank you so much. And before the service time, I had a time to meet some precious guests. And so it was a brief time. I cannot share everything that I wanted to share with all these guests that I meet. But as I meet them, I felt like if I meet them one or two more times, then I can share more in depth with them. And, but I didn't share this part with them. But ever since I was young, as I was going to church, 13, 14, 15, when I became of that age, I had done many bad things with my friends at night as I hang out with my friends. And when the, do when the night grows dark, and we will go to the orchards or the fields to steal apples or fruits, and I will have lots of guilt of sin in my heart. And when I think back on my past, all of my friends, I hung out with friends that liked doing those sort of things. And if I didn't hang out with those kind of friends, then if I didn't steal apples or didn't steal fruits from people's farms, then would I have felt the pain of sin? I would have sinned, of course, but I would, other than just the common sins, I would not feel such great pain of the sins that I committed. And every evening, my friends would come to me and say, let's go steal some apples, some fruits, and I'll follow them. And my friends, they have allowed me to realize that I have this great pain of sin in my heart. For example, let's say I didn't steal apples or didn't steal fruits from people's farms, then I would think that I would not have any sin or little sin. I think I'll be a, I think I would I would think that I'm a decent person, a kind person, and I would not have believed in Jesus. But as I stole, I, it is a completely a sin. Stealing is completely a sin, and I cannot say it all in words. And I, how could you steal and go to people's farms and steal fruits when you're going to church? You're such a bad guy, an evil guy. You're a thief. Everyone in our heart, there are many times when we cannot understand many things. 
But God, as He unravels things to us, and as He unravels things, oh, oh I committed sin, oh, I lied, I, I stole, and God allows you to realize these things one by one. And so the thankful thing about the Bible is, it's not easy for me to realize that I'm a sinner. And as you read the, the Bible today, it talks about Philip. Philip, as he was going down the way, he saw how the eunuch was, he saw the eunuch reading the Bible and he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? How could I understand when no one guides me, right? Ride with me so that you can allow me to understand. And so Philip, he was chasing after, he was chasing after the chariot and says, do you understand what you're reading? And so it may, not, it may seem to not make sense, but that's what happened. And so the eunuch was a... So eunuch, he was a eunuch of a great, of great authority in Ethiopia, and he was going back home. And from that point, that's when Philip saw this eunuch, this Ethiopian eunuch. And he told and he preached the gospel to this eunuch. And that is a story that comes out here. And so there are many stories in the Bible, and this is one of them. Everyone, so the, such an amazing thing is, when you receive the forgiveness of sin, there are many processes of receiving the forgiveness of sin. Oh, I was conflicted because of sin, and I believed in Jesus. Oh, I did many bad things, and then I received the forgiveness of sin. I had the conflicts of sin in my heart, and I was trying my best not to commit sin. And I read the Bible, and then my heart felt frustrated, and I tried my best, and then I received the forgiveness of sin. And so people, they have all sorts of ways they receive forgiveness of sin. And so when, when you realize, and that is when, you, that is when Philip can precisely preach the gospel to this eunuch. And so the angel of the Lord, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, Philip went to the desert. And so Ethiopia, he is not a Jewish person. And so this Ethiopian eunuch, so he was of high authority who had charge over all her treasures, the queen. And so he came to Jerusalem and then he was going back to his home and it's not like the roads were good it was all bumpy and so they didn't have tires back then they didn't have a car back then and so it's been very recent since, since the tire was invented and so they had the wooden wheels and on the chariots it was a bumpy ride and he was reading the bible and so he must have a lot of interest and so he must have lots of interest to be able to even be able to read in that kind of situation and then he's someone was chasing. He was someone was chasing after him. And he, oh, do you understand what you're reading? Someone said. So it may not seem to make sense in the beginning, but what is this? What is this Bible talking about? What is this? What is the prophet Isaiah trying to say? And someone asked him, oh, do you understand what you're reading? And all of a sudden he says, what? I think he knows something. Oh, how could I understand without a guide? Come. Come ride with me. And he rode the chariot, and as they were riding the chariot together, Philip shared the gospel. And so this person, he was Ethiopian, he is not an Israelite. He was an Ethiopian. Now one Ethiopian one saved Ethiopian was returning to Ethiopia, right? And so as he went to Ethiopia, do you think that he would just take naps and just play around leisurely? No. Oh God, as I was riding a chariot, you have allowed me to meet someone out of the blue. And oh, he was, someone was running after me and asked me, do you understand what you're reading? How could I understand if I don't have a guide? And that's how I learned about the gospel and received salvation. And if you, you also need to receive the forgiveness of sin. And he would probably share the gospel and spread the gospel. And that is what the Bible is telling us. And each and every one of us, God, in order to lead us into salvation. For some person, 
their business was going well, but they were ruined. That's how they met God. Some person, they fell into deep sin. They were in pain. They were, they were in suffering, and then they, they met Jesus. Some person, they met a good friend. That's how they were introduced to Jesus. And God, to all human beings, because they are all under sin, first, to realize that you are a sinner, that if you die as a sinner, that you cannot enter eternal life. And once you realize that, oh, I need to receive the forgiveness of sin, and once you have the heart, even if I go to church, oh, there are still churches that, who don't know the forgiveness of sin precisely. Everyone, wouldn't you have the faith to believe in God? In order for God to lead you, God has sent Jesus to us. And so, when you realize that your sins are washed, it's not just me, but other people as well. God is speaking to them as well. Right before I came here to preach, there's one person that I met who came to see me. I didn't have much time and I couldn't share everything that I wanted to share. Wow, this person, I hope he comes again. I hope he comes again. I want to share with him some more. And that's the heart that I had. And then I ran out of time. And then he left. And the important thing is, the gospel that we have, it is not in terms of the life that we live here, the physical world where we eat, sleep, and live our lives, God loved us. And there are times when you make mistakes or commit sin and you feel the suffering because of sin. Uh, and then there's some people who go to church who don't, who don't know the forgiveness of sin and they want to know. And as they receive the forgiveness of sin, There's, they will be joyful and they will be so happy. When people, they receive the forgiveness of sin, of course, there's differences amongst people. But the absolute thing is that God is with me and that is what you're able to truly experience and feel. If you don't feel that way, then that means you only know the Bible theoretically. But in actuality, after receiving the forgiveness of sin, at, before receiving the forgiveness of sin and after if you receive the forgiveness of sin how you speak, how you think how you live it all begins to change even your purpose begins to change everyone we are just ordinary people but after committing sin we, we were people who committed sin who had to receive eternal destruction but as we come before God, I have a lot of sin. Oh, my body is not feeling so good. What if I die right here? If I die right now, then I'll go to hell. And so that heart is given to you. And so that it can draw you closer to Jesus. Everyone, God told Philip, hey, go down to the south way of Jerusalem. Why do I have to go there? Why is God telling me to go here? Out of nowhere, in the desert. God, the Ethiopian eunuch, he came from Ethiopia. And he came all the way to Jerusalem to hear the words of the Lord. And he left without hearing any. And that's why God told Philip to go and he sent him there. If you had the spiritual ears and the heart to discern the heart of God like Philip, then you will probably be able to do these things as well. So Philip, as he was going towards south of Jerusalem, he saw he saw an Ethiopian eunuch, a power, a, one of great authority under the queen of Ethiopia, and he was reading the Bible on top of the, the bumpy chariot. These days, there are the, there's nice cars and nice tires, and so they have good suspension, and it's very stable. But it's only been it's only been recently since they made the cars. Long time ago, they will 
they barely had good roads or they didn't have good wheels. And so it would be a very bumpy ride and as he was reading the Bible. And as Philip chased after him behind him and asked him, Do you understand what you're reading? And what did he say? How can I understand without a guide? What is he saying? He basically is saying that I don't understand what I'm reading. Please teach me if you know. And that is the heart that he has and that we can see. And so they rode the chariot together. And that's when he preached the gospel. And now there was one Ethiopian who received salvation who went back to Ethiopia. Everyone think about it after what, what happens after. What would, what would God do through this Ethiopian? And so one by one through this Ethiopian, one or two people will be saved. Their families, their relatives will be saved. And their co-laborers will be saved. Hey, I heard that you have heard this. What happened over there in Jerusalem? Oh, I went to Jerusalem and as I was on the way, I heard this gospel. And as that gospel was spreading one by one, that's how it even came to our ears today. And as we receive the power of Jesus Christ, we are able to receive the forgiveness of sin. Everyone, Jesus didn't just die for our sins. Truly, God has done so much work for us so that each and every one of you will not fall to hell, will not fall to sin, will be freed from sin, will have a relationship with God, will receive God's grace, will listen to the word of God, for God to help you, for God to bless you, for you to live a graceful life, for you to go to heaven. God works so that you will go towards this direction. Everyone, this morning, why did you come here? If I ask you that, then each and every one of you, you will have different answers. But anyhow, you all came here by the guidance of God. And Pastor Oksu Park, he preaches about this and that. Oh, Pastor, he, sh he shared about this and I should talk about this during... I should talk about this and talk about that and then I should... And as you become closer to God's heart, and as you preach the gospel to other people, as more people receive salvation, all oh, three, four people receive salvation. I'm so moved by God. I'm so thankful. I thought I was the only one who received the remission of sin. But through me, people, other people are being saved. My family members are being saved. And God, He is doing this work that we cannot see in our, with our eyes. This morning, everyone, you are here today because of all those results and work. Everyone, all of you, you are all different. Your per different personality, your names are different, your heights are different, your age are different. All is different. But as you are being led one by one to come and draw closer to God, closer to Him, Everyone, our choir these days, before before the message time, they don't even leave and they sing one more song and another one and another one. I was thinking, wow, the choir, why are they, why are they taking all my time? And, and that's what I was thinking. I didn't say that. The choir is so good. They're so good, but they took a lot of time, right? <laughs> and so nobody agrees with me. So, I think I have to change my heart. I'll change my heart. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia, eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for her to worship. And was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join. And so this person, as he was sitting on his chariot, 
he was a he was a eunuch who was charged over all the treasure. So he has power, authority, and so he was always next to the queen. He was a person who had to serve the queen, but he received some time off, and he went all the way down to Jerusalem. It's not like if you have a sedan where you can just drive and get there really fast. And so I have a, I drive a car that the that the church buy bought for me, and so the engine is good, and so it's so nice, and so it's very comfortable. I think I rode it for six, seven years, and it feels like almost as new. And so I think I can ride the car for the rest of my life, and I'm really managing the car very well. And so I don't allow other people to drive my car. And so I chose one brother who was good at driving, and so he is driving the car right now. In Jerusalem, as he was going down, so it was not an easy place. And so, from Ethiopia, he was of great authority under the queen of Ethiopia. So he is of great authority and position. And this person, he came all the way to Jerusalem from Ethiopia. And so there were prophets and teachers in Jerusalem, but he was unable to hear the gospel, and he just left and went back home. God was thinking, oh, that eunuch, he really came all the way down from, came from Ethiopia all the way up to Jerusalem. It's not like it's like an easy road or a short road. But as he came, if he came and did not leave without receiving the forgiveness of sin and hearing about Jesus, God felt unfortunate about that. That's why God, he told Philip, hey, Philip, He says, Spake unto Philip, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Why is God, why is the Holy Spirit telling me to go all the way to down south of Jerusalem? And he has no idea. And so he went and he saw how there's a chariot that pass, was passing by him and he followed the chariot. And so it's a, it's a horse that's galloping, so it's very fast. And he was running behind the chariot. And Philip, he spoke unto the Ethiopian eunuch. And he saw how he was, the one who was riding the chariot, was reading the Bible. And he asked him, Do you understand what you're reading? Do you, do you understand what you're reading? And he said something. If I don't have a guide, how can I understand? In order to understand the Bible, in order to understand the words, he came all the way to Jerusalem. He went to attend the service and to worship, but he could not understand no matter how much he read it. And he was so saddened that he couldn't understand as he went back home. And he saw someone who was asking him, Do you understand what you're reading? I'm sorry to say, I cannot understand without anyone to guide me. I'm just reading it. If you understand what, if you understand, then can you guide me? And he rode on the chariot with the Ethiopian eunuch. And so Philip, he got on the chariot. And so. the eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had a charge of all her treasures, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. As he was riding the chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the, spirit of, then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And so he was running, chasing after the chariot, right? And he chased after the chariot and says, Do you understand what you read? Oh, I can't, I can't really understand. I'm not too sure. That's not what he said. He said, How can I except some man should guide me? What is this talking about? Can you teach me? That's what he's basically saying. Right? Everyone, he said, Oh, I don't understand. Oh, I forget about it. And so, people, some people will just forget about Oh, what's the point of reading the Bible? No, but he really wants to understand. And so, 
how could I understand when I have no one, if I have no one to guide me? Everyone, the good thing, to, the good thing about you is that you're in church. That the pastor shares about things that you don't understand, right? That's such a good thing. When Philip comes, and he came all the way from Jerusalem down to the south of Jerusalem, and it wasn't just you know walking, and so he had to ride the chariot, and the roads were rough. Do you think there there were asphalts and the paved roads? No, as they were. Galloping, oh, there is something that I had to receive from Jerusalem, but there's nothing that I received, and so I, he was trying to understand his best by reading the Isaiah's prophet, but he couldn't understand anything. But he found, all of a sudden there's someone who asked him, "Do you understand what you're reading?" Oh, this is a the great time, great chance. Oh, how could I understand if no one guides me? God. In order for the Ethiopian people to listen to the gospel, and the Ethiopian, it's hard for him to get his time off. But he came all the way to Jerusalem, and even when he, despite going to Jerusalem, he could not understand a thing. And as he was reading the Bible, Philip went to him and asked him, "Do you understand what you read?" I can't understand what I read. That's not what he said. I don't know. I I have no idea what this is saying. That's not what he said. He said. How can I, except some man should guide me? He's basically he's basically saying, "Teach me, right?" And so Philip he rode on the chariot. He was spending such amazing time. I read this. I didn't know it was talking about this. Well, as I heard what Philip was saying, you know, it's talking about how Jesus has washed away my sins. That's what he realized. And so, God said, "Who is who is Isaiah talking about? Is Isaiah talking about himself or some other man?" And Philip, he interpreted the scripture and he shared about Jesus. And that Ethiopian eunuch received salvation. Maybe it's Philip's first time witnessing. I'm not sure. Maybe he tried. Maybe did it one several times. I, and so they left. And so Philip, he would be led by the Holy Spirit and preach somewhere else. It's very simple. And so when you read this, and we just think that we just meet people and we talk about Jesus once, and oh, what church do you go to? I go to this this church. Oh, uh, since when? Oh, uh, it's been a few years. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't know much. And so your conversation could go this way, but as you read these scriptures, so God commanded the, the commanded Philip to go to the desert to meet with the eunuch, and as he followed after the eunuch, he saw how he was reading the Bible of Isaiah, and he asked him, "Do you understand what you're saying?" Oh, can you ride the chariot with me and allow me? And can you teach me? And so, as the eunuch heard what Philip told him, he heard the gospel, and he heard the gospel and went back home. Do you understand? Is that correct? Then everyone, oh, do you think he just went home and did nothing and just sleep and lived lived a leisure life? No, he. He would have said, "Oh, your Majesty, the Queen, your servant has returned from Jerusalem." But God did not just let me leave empty-handed. As I was riding a chariot, there's someone who chased after me and asked me if I understood what I was reading, but I didn't. So He taught me, and He taught me precisely, and I realized that the blood of Jesus has washed away my sins. And so Jesus. Not only did he wash away my sins, but he also washed away your Majesty, the Queen's sin, as well. What do you mean? Jesus has has taken away my sins. I don't even know Jesus. How could Jesus take away my sins? 
Oh my, or your majesty the queen. Jesus is the son of God. And so Jesus, because he is the son of God, that's why your majesty the queen, God wanted to teach you the way to salvation. And because of this and this, and I have met this and this person, I met a person named Philip, a precious servant of God. And from Jerusalem, as I was going back down to Ethiopia, I saw someone chasing after me, and I found out who was, I found out someone was trying to run after me. And I, re, I looked at him, and he asked me, do you understand what you're reading? And when I was reading, I didn't understand, and I was curious. How can I, if I don't have a guide, oh, would you like to ride with me? And he rode with him. And as he rode the chariot with me, and on the way, he shared the words precisely to me, how my sins were washed by the blood of Jesus. Our sins has been washed, and that is what Philip explained precisely. And there was water nearby. And so the eunuch asked, Hey, there's some water here. Can you baptize me? Why not? You have received the forgiveness of sin. It is, so you should receive the baptism then. Oh, I will baptize you. And so he was baptized. And he came back to Ethiopia. And in my heart, you begin to have the heart that Je of Jesus that you never had before. And in my heart, the grace that I receive is so great. And he cannot keep himself from telling the queen. And even though the queen did not open his mo her mouth first, let me open, he opened his mouth first. And probably this is how it is. This is my assumption. And maybe you can maybe maybe you can think about this with me. And the eunuch began to preach the gospel to the queen. What? Then that Jesus washed away all of our sins by dying on the cross for us? Your Majesty the Queen, the Bible says so. So that's what we believe. How did he know about me that he washed away my sins by being crucified on the cross? How can such things be? That's what I'm saying. For sinners like us, God has shed his blood for us. And when I think about Jesus who shed his blood for us, how much it moves my heart. And when I received this salvation in my heart, I also was so overwhelmed. Your Majesty the Queen, I wanted to deliver these words to you. There's all the, compared to all the work that I did until now, this is the most precious work that I'm doing for you to deliver these words. And if you accept these words, then the wisdom of God will be with you, your, your queen, my queen. Then the, then the nation will be prosperous, will be at rest, will be at peace together with God. And the work of God will not have stopped. And the God will continuously have worked. And so Philip, and I said, let's go, let's go. And as you were going, and as you are going to Ethiopia, and from Ethiopia, and so there's nothing that they gained. And as, a, as they were reading, as the prophet was reading, the eunuch was reading. He asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And so, did anyone, anybody ask you? That's not, that's not what he said, right? He said, how could I understand without a guide, right? And then he began to explain carefully to him. And then he received salvation, the eunuch. And so he went back to Ethiopia. And as a eunuch, 
And so all the, the people in the palace, all the people who have authority and power, all their children, they all receive the forgiveness of sin. And so, everyone, we don't just believe in Jesus. Oh, but, oh, I have received the forgiveness of sin. I received the, the redemption by the blood of Jesus. I can go to heaven now. Don't just stop there. But now you should be the one sharing the words like Philip. And so, just like how the, the gospel has been maintained and has come all the way to us, that is why many people are receiving salvation even today. And even today in this chapel, many people have filled this chapel. That's what I believe. The important thing is, and even though and so as I as the eunuch was reading he said how could I understand what I'm reading if I had no guide and everything was connecting so beautifully what is this talking about everyone you believe in Jesus and after you're receiving the forgiveness of sin numerous amount of people have not received the forgiveness of sin and they are in curse and destruction and they have to enter the eternal hellfire And so through Philip, the eunuch received salvation. And so after the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch received salvation, he went to report to the queen. He reported to his servants, reported to his people, his friends. And so that gospel has now spread across all the world. And that is the gospel that it has become. Our sins has been washed as white as forever. But so unfortunately, people, they don't notice. People who go to church, even though they go to church, they say, Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Lord, please forgive me. And many people, they still pray this way. Why do they do that? Because Jesus has already died on the cross shed his blood and paid for our sins it was then that our sins were washed but without knowing this today many people they ask for the forgiveness of sin they cry and they pray before God how unfortunate this is they came to the father and he said oh I'm a sinner I have now received the forgiveness of sin I have committed sin I'm a sinner and there are many people who still say this but after I received the forgiveness of sin, this gospel, I started to preach this gospel, whether I'm good at it or not. My sister, my older sister, my older sister, my mother, after she passed away, And I was younger than my younger, my older sister. And so my younger sister, my big sister was the one who basically took care of us when my mother passed away. And after, after I told her I received the forgiveness of sin, she said she was really worried about me. Oksu, listen carefully. Even the pastors say that he's a sinner. The elders say that they are sinners. And so, wouldn't pastor be better than you, at least? And I think your heart is so arrogant. And the Bible talks about how our sins are precisely washed by the blood of Jesus. And because our sins are washed by the blood of Jesus, and to receive the forgiveness of sin that Jesus has given us if you receive it by faith 
then salvation will be fulfilled in your heart. Amen, everyone. Then are you a sinner or not? You're not. Jesus has died in my place. He has died in my place. Everyone, this may sound like your story. People, as they go to church, and even though they hear, hear the words of the remission of sin many times, but they still think about, oh, the past sins that Jesus has washed away, but my past sins, my future sins, Jesus has not washed away my sins. Uh, but I'm still a sinner. And there's so, so many people who say this. And in order to save us and to deliver us from sin, God has sent Jesus to us. And Jesus, in order to pay the price of our sins, He has died on the cross, shed His blood for us. Therefore, all of our sins, the price of our sin, has been paid for by Jesus 2,000 years ago on the cross. And so once I realized, realized this, it is true that we have He has received the forgiveness of sin. For Him to accept it this way, and there are many people who... who get angry if you tell them you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. But God, He has come to deliver us from sin. God came, us, God came to us to wash away our sins. God came with a suit of our, God came to wash away our sins. For our sins, He has died. But because we were separate from God. Amen, everyone. By the, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And so, so because, we might, because God thinks that we might not understand or comprehend that our sins are redeemed, God said through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by God's grace, without doing any works, without any works, freely, God says that we are justified. Who says that we are justified? So, are you lying? No. God, if God says, please on our side, who can say anything against us? If God says that you're holy, who can say anything against them? No matter, even if the world says anything against you, if God says you're sanctified, you're sanctified. That's why God tells us, you are justified. God tells you, you are sanctified. And so, we are, I have many thoughts and many opinions, many knowledge. Throw that all away. And if God says that you're justified, you are justified. If God says your sins are washed, your sins are washed. And if I say... The, if to the Bible that you are saved, God will not say, "Oh, just give pass me the the salvation." And so, God, He wants us in our hearts to be filled with the love of God and the salvation of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, as it began began to work in my heart one by one. I began to think about things I never thought of as I began to have faith. And now, all my sins are washed. And this thankfulness. And even if, it, even if I want to go, I cannot go. And so as I see all my sins are washed, And it's true that my sins are washed. Then who will go to heaven other than us who say that we are justified? And it is our church that preaches this gospel. The sad thing is, 
Many Korean churches today the Bible surely says that my sins are washed by the blood of Jesus. This is that as Philip shared everything to the Philip eunuch, as Philip shared everything to the Ethiopian eunuch, and when he heard all of this, he came all the way to Jerusalem. He couldn't hear, he heard nothing, and as he went back empty-handed, when he was going back down with Philip, that's when he discovered that he was, he understood the words, and then he on the way they saw water. They says, "Can you baptize me? Oh, there's some water here. Can you baptize me?" Oh, you know, if you have faith that Jesus Christ has washed away your sins, then you will, you can be baptized. And so, Philip and the eunuch, they, and so he baptized the eunuch, and so Philip went back, and he preached the gospel back in some elsewhere. And that is the story that happens here. I believe I was 13, 13, 14 years old. I'm not too sure. I have committed a lot of sin. Especially with my friends, as I as I hang out with my friends, I would steal apples, I would steal persimmon, and I would steal all these fruits. And when it's time to have fun with my friends, I would hang out and steal with them. And so, because of my friend, I have a lot of sin. I have committed a lot of sin. But one day, every time I go home. God, he, he has allowed me to read the Bible many times, once, twice, three times, four times. And as I saw it, the amazing thing is that really by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, we are justified. God says that we are justified, right? God has redeemed us. God has freely by His grace, freely by His grace, called me justified. It's true that I am just. And that is the heart that I had. And so even when I go to America, I share in front of many people. One time I went to America in front of a pastor's conference, around 1,500 pastors. For three days, I shared the same lecture with them. And by chance, they were connected. And many people, they get so shocked when they see this kind of event. You know, they see our choir, not by silver and gold, nor by treasures that fade. That is not how your sins are redeemed. Holy Lord God, little Lamb Jesus Christ, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So we have sung these songs so many times. One day, as I read the Bible, the blood of Jesus washed away my sins, and that is what was recorded in the Bible. I was so thankful. By the which will, we are sanctified, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It is so good. And that is when I began to start preaching the gospel. And as I preached the gospel for many decades, really, I would move to tears. A person like me preaching the gospel. But a person who, there are many people who received the salvation in their hearts. And as the Holy Spirit came into their hearts, and I saw how the Holy Spirit has worked in their life, and it was so clear. Heavenly Father is with us. And so even though we have committed sin, how can we say that we're righteous? Don't say any nonsense. Oh Lord, the sinner. 
for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so, during that time, it was pastors. Um, and so, God told us that we are justified. If God said that we're justified, then we are justified. God is not giving, taking money from us. God is not taking anything from us without works, freely, freely by His grace. And that is what I believe. Today, many people, they go to the church, but they still say that they're sinners. Many pastors, they, because pastor said that he has received salvation, they call him a cult. And so most countries have heard the gospel already. And especially, kebab is really dirty. And even in Seoul, I preach the gospel. And so, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God calls us justified. When you accept these words by faith, please accept these words by faith. I have done many bad things. I have lied a lot. I have stolen a lot. But God, you call me justified, then I am justified. God, you said that my sins are washed, then my sins are washed. And my dream is fulfilled. My, my salvation is fulfilled. Today, even many people in the city of Seoul, many churches here, they still tell their church members to forgive their sins. And I hope that you may also preach this gospel. Not by silver or gold, nor by treasures that fade. The sins that I have cannot be redeemed. Holy Lord, our God, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. How amazing this is. Right, everyone? Everyone, even when the world dies, you, even when the world is destroyed, you cannot... Exchange this world for your salvation. The Jesus who has died for our sins. The Jesus who has been crucified for our sins. And for Jesus, for God to create this opportunity for us to understand the word. And for the Holy Spirit to guide us to understand these words. We give glory and honor to Jesus. And still there are many people who go to church in Seoul. Lord, please forgive me. And there are still many people who are not saved yet. Everyone tell them, no, it is Jesus who has washed away our sins. May you explain the Bible accurately. And so I hope that all the people here may receive the forgiveness of sin and may receive the great blessing to go to the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and give you glory. Lord, we are foolish. We are nothing. And you did not tell us to do something for our salvation. Lord, you have already redeemed us of our sin. All you told us to do is believe. And Lord, all the people here today, may the word of God work in their hearts and accept the, the truth that our sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus. And we are no longer sinners, but righteous. Allow us to live a bright and blessed life. Allow us to preach this gospel. Allow us to live our life abiding with you, Lord, so that we may receive your grace and, may, and so that we may return the glory and honor to your name. Lord, all the people who have gathered here, may your great grace be upon them all. I thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll finish here.